بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continue on our treaties this is the 17th درس 17th lesson in اصول السنة by Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal Rahimahullah Ta'ala, Imam Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah, and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala have mercy upon all the Imams, the great Imams of the Sunnah who preserve this religion. And may Allah bless us to be a part of that great effort in this time. And may Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala bless us with ikhlas with the bat. May Allah bless us with ikhlas with the bat, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Because there is so much bid'ah, and there is so much kufr, and there is so much shirk. And there are so many things to take you away from the sunnah and so many challenges to the sunnah, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and so many challenges to you just being a Muslim, especially in the West. There are so many things to try to take us away, so much sin and sinfulness and temptation and, and difficulties that we experience. So give glad tidings to Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah and strive your best to be amongst them to study their books and learn the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the foundations of the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as espoused by Ahl Sunnati Wal Jama'ah <clears throat> and we left off we we're talking about khusumat uh, getting into controversy and debating and argumentation and Shaykh Abdul Aziz Al-Raji Hafizullah Ta'ala mention some beautiful narrations and I, I just felt it was absolutely necessary to mention some of these beautiful narrations that the Shaykh mentioned Hafadullah Ta'ala from the Salaf of our Ummah Rahimahullah Ta'ala Jami'an and one of the beautiful narrations Related some of the some of the narrations related that he used to explain Imam Ahmed's uh, statement when Imam Ahmed said, "Rahimahullah Taala, fi kalam fil qadr wa ru'ya wa Quran wa ghairiha min sunnin makruh wa manhi anhu la yukun sahibuhu wa in asaba bi kalamihi sunna min ahl sunnati hatta yidha ajidala wa yu'min bil athar." Imam Ahmed said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, that verily, speaking about the divine decree of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, the Qadr, and the Ru'ya, seeing Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala on the Day of Judgment, you know, getting in debate and controversy about these issues, and the Qur'an, and other than it, from the Sunan, is hated and it is prohibited. And the person who does so, even if they get it correct, is not considered from Ahlul Sunnah. They're not from Ahlul Sunnah. Ahlul Sunnah does not mean that you're just not Shia. This is a very general tarif that most of the people are aware of. But Ahlul Sunnah is referring, in reference to those people who accept and practice the speech of Allah. The Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with the understanding of the Sahaba Radiallahu Ta'ala Anhum Ajma'een the, the Salaf of this Ummah and that they refer back to them in all the affairs of their religion that they use those examples and that they accept as their evidences four things the Quran the Sunnah if it's Sahih and the ijma, you know, the consensus of the ulama, especially the consensus of the sahaba, and there's because they're the asal of the jama'ah, they're the foundation of the jama'ah, they are the foundation, they are the origin of Ahl Sunnah. And qiyas, you know, making sound qiyas, an analogy which is derived from the text, from Ahl Ilm from the people of knowledge who have the ability to derive those 
those analogies by looking at new situations, nawazil, and being able to go back to the nasus, go back to the understanding of the self, and make an analogy, a sound n- analogy with the conditions for making an analogy. That's who Ahlul Sunnah, that's what Ahlul Sunnah takes as evidence. And so to be from Ahlul Sunnah, Imam Ahmed said, that the person who engages in debating and controversy and stuff like this, especially if they're doing it to show off or doing it to uh, belittle someone or, you know, they're not doing it to raise up the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and make things clear for the people and with the other conditions for when it is permissible to debate, then this is prohibited. And the person involved in this is not from Ahlul Sunnah, as Imam Ahmed said, until they leave controversy and debating and argumentation, even if they got it correct. In relation to this, Shaykh Abdulaziz Raji, Hafidullah Ta'ala, said that the person who gets involved in the Qadr of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. As, as, as if they're rejecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his divine decree. The one who who asks about the Qadr gets in, involved in about the, the decree and, and challenges Allah, so to speak, by saying, you know, why did this happen to me? Why such and such? That doesn't mean you don't question yourself and look and reflect upon your sins and what you have done to, to be a part of causing, uh, you know, to have negative... Uh, outcomes in your life and effects in your life, of course we, have, uh, we reflect upon how, how we live our life and, and, and so forth in our sins. <clears throat> May Allah forgive us of our sins. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. But however, to, to debate the Qadr, to challenge the Qadr, and to use the Qadr, as an excuse for your sinfulness to say, well, you know, Qadr Allah, you know, I committed zina or I drank alcohol last night. Qadr Allah, ma shafa'ah, that's what Allah decreed. No, that is abuse of the divine decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is not accepting the divine decree of Allah nor accepting responsibility for the sins that you're you're doing. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins. Ameen, ya rabbil alameen. Nor questioning the Qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's why the Shaykh he said, <clears throat> Why did he do this? Or, So, Shaykh Abdul Aziz Ar Raji, Hafidullah Ta'ala, he said, also asking about not just the Qadr but those other aspects that are mentioned in the Quran and the Sunnah regarding creed asking about the kafiyah for example how are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sifat you know Allah subhanahu uh, the Prophet sallallahu said that Allah in a sahih hadith I believe it's in sahih Muslim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said this, we believe that, we have taslim fi qalb. Qala alayhi salatu wasalam, yanzunu rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala kulu thulutha layla la akhir fa yakul. That our Lord descends to the lowest heaven every last third of the night and ask. He asks about the people who are making tahajid. What are the people doing? Are they doing righteousness? Are they seeking forgiveness? Are they uh, asking of Allah? And these kind of things, because Allah will give them as, as is narrated in the narration. But the point being of mentioning this narration is showing that Ahl Sunnah, we accept that. We believe it. We don't ask how. We don't say, well, SubhanAllah. In China, it's this time. Seattle, it's this time. Bellevue, it's this time. Uh, 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 Birmingham it's this time New Jersey it's this time Medina it's this time no we don't ask those things we accept those nasus we don't know how but we believe that is Iman that's Iman bil ghaib 
And that's the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah in Surah Al Baqarah. Of what they, he mentions the characteristics of the believers. And their minhaj. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi kitab al-kareem. Alif lam meem. Thalik al-kitab al-la rayba fi. Hudin lil-muttaqeen. Alladheena yu'minun bil-ghaybu yuqimun as-salaa. Wa mimma razaqnahum yunfikoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after alif lam meem. He says, Thalik al-kitab al-la rayba fi. That is the book which the, contains no doubt. Hudin lil-muttaqeen. And it's a guidance for the those who are pious. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brings details about who those people are pious. He says, Alladheena. Those, alladina yu'minuna bil ghayb, those who believe in the unseen, those who believe in the unseen. That's the method of Ahl Sunnah. They believe in the unseen. Accept it. Just leave it. Don't get into ta'wil. And I know the Ash- the Ashidis and those other people who are spreading a lot of fitna on the earth. In fact, they're telling you, hey, we we gotta uh, change the meaning of this. I know the Quran says this, but hey, let's uh, let's make ta'wil of this ayat. When you make ta'wil, it means you're negating. Allah said this. The Prophet ﷺ said, Allah descends to the lowest heaven. But you're saying, no, 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 no. It means this. It means His mercy descends. It means His power. It means such and such. Abidin. Accept it. Yanzunu rabbuna tabarak wa ta'ala kulu thuluth al-akhir. The Prophet ﷺ said that. Our Lord, the Almighty, descended the last third of the night. And He says, He asks, Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Ahl Sunnah, they accept the Sifat, and, and that is a Sifat of Ahl Sunnah. Wa ta'wil nususiha. And that's the what, uh, for example, the Ashaira and, and other groups, they make ta'wil of the nusus. They change it to fit their aql, to fit their intellect. And negating it and using as a proof to negate those in the sus, those texts of the Quran or the Sunnah they negate it with the excuse saying we are freeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from being from resembling his creation or we are making sure that we are not making a resemblance between Allah and his creation but Ahl Sunnah accepts those in the sus as they are and we say that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descends to the lowest heaven in a, in a manner that suits His majesty. Khalas. It's sufficient that. Or that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rose above His throne in a manner that suits His majesty. I don't know how. We don't know why. We don't ask. We don't go into it. We stop with the text. That is important for us to understand. That's the foundation of the sunnah. Stop with the nasus. And then the shaykh said, uh, similar to the way the Mutakallimun and from the Mutakallimun is people like the Ashaira and some of the other groups uh, of Ahl Kalam. And likewise, having controversy or debating about the Quran and other than it from the Sunnah. So he, he's just mentioning what we've already mentioned in the past couple of lessons. So I wanted to end with some of these beautiful narrations he brings uh, at, at the end of this chapter. Uh, section of the book Qala Bagawi Imam Bagawi rahimahullah ta'ala said fi shara sunnah in his book uh, entitled shara sunnah ittafaqu ulama salaf min ahl sunnati ala ala nahi an al jidal wa khusumat fi sifat wa ala zajr an khawl fi fi al ilm al kalam wa ta'allam wa ta'allam wa ta'allamuh beautiful beautiful statement by Imam Abagawi rahimahullah ta'ala he said rahimahullah ta'ala he said that the the salaf of this ummah or the, he said the scholars of the salaf of this ummah you mean the pious predecessors of this ummah from Ahl Sunnah that they prohibited so they were in agreement. This is consensus. He said, "Ittafaqa ulama salaf." He said, the, 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 "The ulama of the salaf were in agreement. They were in consensus that it is prohibited to debate and argue about the uh, divine attributes of Allah." And they were also in agreement with warning against. And 
to, to warn against or punish those people who dwell who who dwell into uh el kalam you know into like the f- philosophy of of uh, of debate and argumentation and uh you know using the intellect to precede the text and this is a, a key foundation of the of, of many of the sects, but especially being the Asha'ira, they're the most famous and probably the most widespread in this day and age. That this is their menhaj. <clears throat> so the Salaf were in agreement to warn against them and, and punish them, in fact, about those people who, who got involved themselves in ilm kalam and even learning it and ta'allamuhu. So this shows us the importance of avoiding debating and argumentation and controversy re- regarding the creed of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah and the Minhaj of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Qala Imam Abu Muhammad Abu Bahari rahimahullah ta'ala fi shar sunnah wa'lam annaha lam takun zandaqa wala kufr wala shukuk wala bid'ah wala dalal wala hayra fi din illa min kalam wal jidal wal mira wa khusuma والعجب كيف يجتري الرجل عن على المراء والخصومة والجدال والله يكو ما يجادل في آيات الله إلا الذين كفروا فعليك بتسليم ورضا بآثار وكف وسكوت. That right there sums up the minhaj of of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and that's a very important book. And I hope we have the opportunity to study that together as well in the future. Shar Sunnah Imam Babahari. Imam Babahari said in this narration, Rahimahullah Taala, he said, and no, wa'lam, that verily there isn't zandaka, you know, heresy nor disbelief, nor doubtfulness, nor bid'ah, nor, you know, in a religious innovation, nor dalala, nor misguidance, nor a, la- a fickleness in the religion, except with kalam, meaning ahla kalam. Look at this, them ahla kalam. How is it a people could make their religion based on kalam? So you have to question, when you hear those Ashadis and Diobandis and others who use their intellect to precede the text, you, you, you need to question them and you need to be cautious yourself. <clears throat> he said, Illam and Kalam. All of those things are the result of involving in philosophy and, 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 and getting in, following Ahl Kalam. And Jidal, and argumentation or controversy. Wa Mira, and debating. Wa Khusuma. You know, an argumentation. And it is strange how a man could involve himself in debating and argumentation and controversy. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they do not, uh, and, and, and he does not uh, debate regarding the verses of Allah except those who disbelieve. Meaning that no one does that except those who disbelieve. SubhanAllah. That debates about the ayats of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَعِيَادٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ So then he said, Imam Baba Hari rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, So then, فَعَلَيْكَ taslim. It's upon you acceptance in the heart. Just submit. وَرِضَى And being pleased with the athar. Being pleased with the ahadith, the sound of hadith and the narrations of the salaf of this ummah. And stopping and keeping silent. So don't get into debate and argumentation about things you have no knowledge about. Keep silent. Follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Follow the authentic text, the Quran and the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and the understanding of the salaf of this ummah. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything I said that was correct was from Allah. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with tawfiq to complete this book and gain benefit from it. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.